I told you they couldn't keep me down for too long. I promise I'll be good, so I'll just stand for a little bit to do my interviews, and then I'll go back and sit down and be a good girl. But right now, I could not stay seated because I have in studio with me Carla Paris. Welcome to TTT. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much. It's exciting to be here under the TTT brand. Yes, and welcome to Now, <laughs> yes. the brand new morning show on TTT. Looking fabulous as usual. Thank My you, goodness. Lisa. Leave that. You see this? You see this on your hand here? Yeah? You need to leave that when you, when you leave in the studio. Leave that with me. Look, have that on my hand. Carla, you know, you have been building your brand as we speak about rebranding yes. with regard to being an entertainment lawyer and providing information so valuable. And on the program today, we're going to be looking at the launch of Carnival. Yes. We're going to be going out live to the chairman and CEO of NCC in the second hour. Great. So we thought it would be great to start with you to talk about the business of Carnival in this first hour. And it's not too early now because this is the time of the year that people start signing contracts for the FETs and for performances and for a number of activities um, during the carnival season. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a bit about co the contract. Uh, what historically uh, Trinidad and Tobagoans generally talk about my word is my bond and don't like to put things in writing. What do you find and what do you suggest? Well, I find that every year in my practice, a lot of the issues come up around carnival time concerning contracts, you're right. Whether it be event promoter contracts, whether it be contracts from soccer artists, mm -hmm. whether it be persons who don't understand design rights that they may design have given rights? away. Yes. Explain. So it might be a carnival costume designer. Yes. And you're working with a particular mass band. And after the carnival season has ended, your design is truly fabulous. Uh, third-party companies based overseas are interested in using your design but you don't know wait hold a second do I own the design mm -hmm. or is it owned by the band mm -hmm. that type of thing and those are the kinds of issues that come up every year in carnival time and it's very important to address it up front right so it's not necessarily true to say therefore that if I'm a designer and I design a costume it automatically belongs to the intellectual property resides with the owner of the band then I can negotiate those rights? Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm suggesting? Right. I'm saying that intellectual property law is clear. The Copyright Act is clear. Yeah. The owner of the design is the person who created that design. Mm -hmm. However, with regard to these particular arrangements with carnival costume, um, carnival mass camp owners uh, and, and band owners and so forth, mm -hmm. you need to have a written contract clarifying what the intention is. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the purpose, as you know, Lisa, for the YouTube show that I've created, The Business yeah. of Carnival. <laughs> Get that in there, girl. Get yes. that in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Congratulations <laughs> on that, actually. And I know you did Barbados re recently. So, congrats. Good for you. Congratulations on the program. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's essentially, you know, what I wanted to talk about today, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. reason for the program and mm -hmm. how persons can access a show like that. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. You know, because the, the, the whole point is to have an educational outlet to show persons mm -hmm. why it is important to understand the background aspect of Carnival. Mm -hmm. You know, and the first edition, which was shot in Trinidad, featured various stakeholders like yes. Fayon Lyons, Dean, Dean Akin of Tribe, Jules Sobian of Caesar's Army, and Marvin Eversley of Liz Blizzard Blizzard. Right. And the intention was to show the wide range and category of persons in mass, yeah, photographers, we, videographers. Yeah. Because most people think of entertainment sector, they, th they see the performers on stage, um, they may see the mass band owners, but they don't understand, may not necessarily see the number of people. It's like film, yes. the number of people, who, the large footprint that takes place when you're working in these industries, in these creative industries. That's exactly yeah. the mm -hmm. point, to yeah. show the variety of persons who are involved in behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but more importantly, to help them understand why it's important to look at your activity in Carnival as a business. Yes. And how to protect your intellectual property so that you can generate revenue down the line. Right. Do you find um, now people are more open to uh, putting structure to their business and putting contracts and having entertainment lawyers negotiate on their behalf and so do you find that it's becoming more prevalent now or it's still an uphill task? It's still largely an uphill task. I mean, I started my practice eight years ago. 
So since then, is I have seen some change. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen people more willing to use contractual agreements, mm -hmm. whereas before they would be afraid. Yes. You know, and they yeah. would say, "Well, oh gosh, you know, if I give my design, if I, if I as a designer, and I'm so excited to take part in this particular band, yeah. you know, suppose they turn me down and they yes. say, "Well, who do you think you are?" Right. You know, now yeah. a lot of that is changing. But sometimes, you know, you have to do that. You have to be the one to set the precedent. Because That's right. I have found that in many instances. And then further down the line, it really redounds to the benefit of not just yourself, but the entire industry. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. So, so in terms of the downside now, what have you seen with regard to persons who perhaps have said, no, I just want to go. It's my friend. You know, let's go along together. Um, have you ever come across circumstances like that? And I find that it's the same throughout the region. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I would have spoken to the persons in the Trinidad edition, mm -hmm. a lot of them said the same thing. Yeah. That they had to start off first informally in yeah. order to sort of establish themselves. But as they built and as they grew, yeah. they realized the importance of this formality. Yes. In Barbados, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a discussion with a DJ who you may know, DJ Puffy in mm -hmm. Barbados. He's a mm -hmm. very young guy yeah but is understanding from early the importance yeah. of I'm taking part in crop over my managers giving you an a performance contract ahead of time mm -hmm. these are the details that I need to be able to perform well at your fat yes this is the technical specifications that I need mm -hmm. in my DJ booth and so forth the equipment that's going to give me the standard that yes. I'm accustomed to performing yes. at. so you know it, it, it is changing congratulations to you Carla because with the work that you're doing um, inadvertently or not, um, you are in fact raising the bar in terms of the standards with regard to uh, the level of professionalism in the industry. So congratulations to you Thank on you, that. Sir. What's mm -hmm. next for you? Well, I mean, what's next is my team and I, the business of Carnival, are looking to see where are we going to go next? What mm -hmm. territories are we looking to cover? Because mm -hmm. as you know, there is a carnival literally in every Caribbean island. And around the world. And across the world, yeah. in Europe, different parts of Europe. And yeah. every government is talking about diversification of the economy. And, you know, they don't want to rely strictly on tourism. Yeah. Here in Trinidad, as you know, we're looking to move away from oil for the longest while. <laughs> Well, you know what we say on this show, entertainment is the new oil. It is yes, the new oil. there you go. It That's what we say. It is absolutely the new oil. That's what we say. And when we have a new industry, we need lawyers, entertainment lawyers. I remember you were one of the first. Yeah. I remember. I remember when you said you wanted to go into entertainment law. I was like, yes, because they're... At the time, I don't think there was anyone who was specializing right. in that field. So congratulations right. on the work that you're doing. Continue to do the work that you're doing and coming back and letting us know what you're doing as you go across the region and I predict the world. Yes, yeah? thank you, <laughs> Lisa. You. Uh, that's Carla Paris, the attorney at law, especially with regard to entertainment law. And she has a YouTube um, channel, is it? A YouTube, yes, a, YouTube, a YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel, channel which hosts yes. the web series. Yes, the that hosts the web series. So you watch us, you know, make sure and watch us, but you can watch her too. <laughs> <laughs>